Hello, gorgeous. Are you ready to come visit my house for my nephew's birthday party? Remember to prepare a present for him. And most importantly, dress well. I want everyone to admire me for having such a wonderful and beautiful girlfriend like you. Hi, baby. I've prepared a present for your nephew, but I'm very worried. What if your family doesn't like me? Don't worry. I'm sure everyone will love you. You are very beautiful. Trust me. You'll be the highlight of the party. You're the looks, and I'm the brains in the relationship. That's how it works. So, you're saying you're only with me because of my looks? Basically, I mean... What, so if I didn't have my looks, you wouldn't be with me? Well, maybe. I don't mean anything by that. But you just got looks and nothing else. And that's what makes me proud. Every time I go out on the street with you, other men look at you and admire me because I have you. It always gives me a sense of victory and pride. No. You love me for me, right? Babe, I'm just teasing. Of course I love you for you. I mean, what if I were really fat? Or had acne spots and pitted scars or freckles? Would you still want to marry me? Oh, no, no, honey. I am such a wonderful, successful, and handsome man. So my wife must be beautiful and fancy, too. I would definitely never date someone the size of a whale, let alone marry. And you seem to have gained a bit of weight lately. Maybe you should hit the gym to prepare for our wedding. I want you to stay sexy and slim. What? Are you kidding? I... I didn't realize I had gained weight. I guess... I just feel like you only care about my looks, not who I am as a person. Come on, Chris, don't be ridiculous. Of course I care about who you are. But let's be real. Physical attraction is important in a relationship, and I want to be with someone who takes care of themselves and looks good. I understand that, but when you said you wouldn't marry someone the size of a whale, it really made me feel insecure. I can't stop thinking about it, and I'm scared that you'll leave me if I gain weight or if I don't look as good as I used to. Oh, Chris, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I love you for who you are, not just your looks. I think you're beautiful no matter what. But what if I'm not beautiful anymore? What if I'm not the same person you fell in love with? You'll always be the same person to me, Chris. And even if you do gain weight or your appearance changes, it won't change how I feel about you. Okay. I'll try to believe you. Trust me, baby. I love you more than anything in this world. Hey, Mike. Where are you? I need you to come over and sign the surgery form. Surgery form? What for? I mean, your face was already ruined. Even if you have more surgery, you won't be as beautiful as you used to be. It's just a waste of money, Chris. How can you say that to me, Mike? Didn't you say just a few days ago before the bandages were taken off that you would love me no matter what? And now that I'm not as beautiful as I used to be, you're saying that it's a waste of money to have surgery? Also, you're calling me stupid for trying to save your nephew from the fire. Chris, I didn't mean to hurt you, but you have to understand that I'm upset about what happened to your face. And yeah, you did act stupid and careless by running into a burning house to save a child. Isn't the first thing you should do when you see a fire flare up to protect that face? Now look at you. Your neck and face both have second and third degree burns. The doctor told me that there's almost no chance you'll ever be as pretty again as you used to be. So you're saying that my appearance is more important to you than my life. You said that you love me no matter what, but now you're acting like my face is the only thing you care about. And don't you dare call me stupid for saving a child's life. That child is your nephew. And I couldn't just stand there and watch him burn. And to this day, I still can't believe that when you guys found out that there were still people trapped in that house, not a single member of your family rushed in to save the child. It's really cruel and heartless. Hey, watch your mouth. We didn't know there were still people trapped inside. It was a chaotic situation. 
and we were trying to get everyone to safety. We're not heartless or cruel. We're human beings who make mistakes. Even if I knew I wouldn't put myself in such a dangerous situation, but would calmly wait for the fire department to arrive. Wait? Until when were you going to wait? Until the boy turned to ashes? I know, Chris, and I appreciate what you did for my nephew. But I just can't help feeling angry and frustrated about what happened to your face. I'm sorry for being insensitive, but I can't just pretend like everything's okay. And as for your appearance, of course it's not the only thing I care about. But let's face it, looks matter. And I'm just worried about how this is going to affect us. How could you say that? I thought you loved me for who I am, not just what I look like. And now that I don't look like your idea of pretty, you're acting like I'm some kind of burden. No, Chris, that's not what I meant. I'm not trying to make you feel like a burden, but I can't ensure my love for you will be the same. And we have to face the reality of the situation. Your face is never going to be the same again. And we have to figure out how to deal with that. Really? I just feel so insecure now, Mike. I'm scared that you'll leave me if I don't look as good as I used to. Really? Now let's sign that surgery form and get you on the road to recovery. We'll get through this together, I promise. Thank you for being here with me, Mike. Hi, Chris. I wanted to check in since you missed your psychotherapy appointment today. The therapist didn't see you and she said you weren't picking up your phone, so I'm just texting to see if you're okay. If you're busy, I can tell her to reschedule your appointment for a later time. Is everything fine? No, I didn't forget my appointment. It's just, I didn't want to go out in public because of my burned face. I feel ugly and disgusting and don't dare to face people. Even if I can't see myself in the mirror now, how can I have the courage to go out into the street? I understand how you feel, Chris. In that case, let's have an online therapy session today. And I'll be your special therapist. How are you feeling today? Did you seriously just ask me how I feel? My face is burnt to a crisp. I look like I'm wearing a Halloween mask. 24-7! It's a nightmare. I understand how difficult this is for you. It's tough to imagine what you're going through. No, you can never understand me. Whenever I go out, I have to wear sunglasses and cover my face with a mask and people treat me differently. If I forget to wear it, people will look at me with pity and stay away. And children will point at my face and call me a monster. I know this might sound horrible to hear, but there are many things to be grateful for. Such as? I lost my job because they told me my face scares customers away. And they said that working in the beauty industry isn't as ugly as this. My dog barks at me every time she sees me. My friends don't recognize me. And whenever I want to meet them, they always find excuses to refuse me. And to top it all off, my fiancé doesn't want me anymore. You'll never know how upset I am. But you're alive. It's not everything, but it's a start. Yeah, that's not really saying a lot. Look, maybe your fiancé just needs some time to get used to your new look. Your fiancé may need some time to get used to your new look. And it could also be that the side effects of your medication are making you more sensitive. No, my fiancé doesn't love me anymore. I can tell by his actions recently. He always avoids me and doesn't cuddle me like he used to. Look at me! I'm hideous. Chris. What makes a person beautiful is who she is on the inside. And to me, you are the most beautiful, bravest, strongest, and most admirable girl in the world. You used your body to shield a child from burns without a moment's hesitation. That's an incredible act of courage and kindness. But no one said I did the same thing as you. <laughs> they blamed me for being too careless, stupid, and rash. At that time, I didn't have time to think. I reacted because I didn't want the child hurt, so I rushed out to help him. 
I can't imagine how miserable his life would be if he got burned like this. If I don't do something, I will live my life in regret. Exactly. And that's what makes you so beautiful. You're a kind and selfless person. And if your fiancé can't see that, then maybe it's best not to marry him. Thank you, doctor. I feel a bit better now. I'm glad to hear that, Chris. I've been doing some research on burn victims and their recovery, and I found a specialist in New York who's had tremendous success in treating severe burns like yours. I've arranged a meeting with her, and I'm confident that together we can find the best possible treatment for you so that you can become the beautiful girl you once were. Well, actually, you've always been beautiful. Thank you so much, Dr. David. You've been great. It's my pleasure, Chris. Thank you for sharing your feelings with me. It's late, Mike. Where are you now? My buddy John is having a basketball match tonight. I'm gonna go down there to watch with the guys. Oh, I love basketball. Send me the location and I will come join you guys. I'll get ready right now. No, 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 baby. This is like a guys only thing. Really, just stay at home. What's happening? You always bring me to gatherings with your friends. But things have changed. What changed? We still love each other, don't we? Your face, Chris. It's not what it used to be. Oh, you know what I mean. Are you embarrassed? If you're embarrassed, you can tell me, you know. I mean, we haven't talked properly in over four months. You hardly even look at me anymore. You haven't slept on the same bed with me. And I'm starting to think that you don't want to marry me anymore. All right. You want to know the truth? Yes, I'm embarrassed. And I'm sick of pretending to be happy in this relationship. I mean, look at you. You're disgusting. I try my best to act like normal, but I can't. It looks like somebody took a cheese grater and just let loose on your face. And marry you? Are you kidding me? Who would want to marry you right now? God, you look like Freddy Krueger. What are you saying? I'm saying I'm breaking up with you. All right? I'm sorry, but your face puts me off. How could you say such things to me? Don't you know how much I love you? Don't you remember all the good times we've had together? Of course I remember the good times, Chris. But those times are gone now. Things have changed. And I can't keep pretending that everything is okay. I'm just being honest with you as you ask. And the truth isn't always easy to hear, Chris. So you're just going to throw everything away because of the way I look? You're going to break up with me because of something that's beyond my control? It's not just about the way you look, Chris. It's about the fact that I can't be with someone who I'm not attracted to. It's about the fact that I can't keep pretending to be happy when I'm not. I'm sorry, Chris, but I can't do this anymore. And you could have avoided this if you hadn't intended to be such a heroine. No, Mike. I'm not trying to be anyone. I'm just trying not to live in sin and regret for the rest of my life for standing on the sidelines while watching someone die. So what? Do you hope my family will feel grateful to you and consider you as a benefactor? Let me tell you, the other day after visiting you from the hospital, my family wouldn't allow me to marry you anymore because they said your face was too scary and they didn't want the neighbors to talk about it. My nephew cried when he saw you, didn't he? He told me that you're a monster. Whoa, that really hurts. You could have told me this before, Mike. Instead, you strung me along, pretending everything was okay. How could you be so heartless? You gave me hope, but in the end, you were the one who extinguished my hope. Yes, whatever you want. I just want to say that I am breaking up with you, and you should move out of the house before I come back. No, Mike, you're wrong. I'm the one who's breaking up with you. What? You're breaking up with me? You should be begging and holding me back. Yes, I am. I can't be with someone who is so shallow and cruel. You're willing to throw away a four-year relationship because of something that is beyond my control? And then you insult me and my appearance saying such hurtful things? I can't be with someone who treats me like that. 
You're not being fair, Chris. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm just being honest with you. Honesty is one thing, Mike, but there's no excuse for being cruel. You could have expressed your concerns in a much kinder and more constructive way, but instead, you chose to insult me and my appearance. That's not something I can forgive or forget easily. And one more thing, you're making a mistake here, Mike. You are the one who needs to move out, not me. What? You're kicking me out of my own home? This isn't your home, Mike. I paid for it before we even started dating. And since you clearly have no respect for me or my feelings, I think it's best if you leave. Fine, I'll leave. But don't think you can just kick me out and forget about me. You'll surely regret not begging me to stay there. No one will date you anymore. I'm not trying to forget about you, Mike. But I can't stay in a relationship where I'm constantly being insulted and degraded. It's not healthy for either of us. Oh, so now you're the one who's concerned about our health? That's rich. I just want us both to be able to move on and find happiness in our own lives. And if that means we have to part ways, then so be it. I deserve someone who loves me for who I am, not just for my appearance. Good luck finding someone who can love that face of yours. I don't need your luck, Mike. I have faith that I'll find someone who can appreciate me for who I am, not just for my looks. And as for you, I hope you find happiness too, but it won't be with me. Hey Chris, how have you been? It's been so long since we talked. How is life treating you? Mike? Why are you suddenly reaching out? It's been three years and I haven't heard from you. Is everything okay? No, everything is not okay at all. I just miss you a lot. I can't stop thinking about you after all these years. What? Are you kidding me? That year you said you didn't love me anymore because of my ugly face, remember? Actually, two years ago, something terrible happened to me. I was attacked by a gang, and they slashed my face, leaving me with a long, hideous scar. My left eye is also blind, so I can only see out of one eye now. Since then, no girl wants to date me. Oh my god, that's awful. What happened exactly? I was out drinking with my friends and I got very drunk. I couldn't control my behavior and got into a fight with a gang. They did this to me. My family spent all their money on my treatment, but it hasn't helped much. I miss you so much, Chris. I think we're a good match now. I'm sure you've been lonely all these years, haven't you? I'm so sorry for what happened to you, Mike, but I can't get back to you. Why not? Do I need to apologize or beg you to come back? Come on, Chris. We're both equally ugly now. Don't make it so hard for me. You're not a petty person, are you? No, Mike. It's not that I'm holding a grudge from the past. It's just that I'm engaged and my wedding is next week. What? You're getting married? To whom? Who would want to be with someone with a scarred face like yours? He's my dermatologist, David. He's been there for me over the years, taking care of me and helping me feel beautiful again. He was by my side when I was at my lowest and always told me that I was the most beautiful person in the world. He helped me stay positive and have faith in life again. And my face is no longer scarred. It's beautiful again. What do you mean, beautiful again? That's impossible! David spent a lot of time researching methods for my surgery. And after 15 surgeries using skin grafting, my face has healed and recovered. You're lying to me, Chris. I can't believe you're getting married to someone else. You were mine, and now you belong to someone else? Mike, please calm down. I'm sorry, but I can't change how I feel. It's been years since we broke up, and I've moved on. How could you do this to me? After everything we've been through, you just throw me away like garbage? I didn't throw you away, Mike. You chose to end things between us. And now I've found someone who loves me for who I am, scarred or not. I can't believe this is happening to me. You're supposed to be mine. I'm the only one who truly understands you. That's not true, Mike. David has been there for me through thick and thin. He accepts me for who I am and loves me unconditionally. And he's the one I want to spend the rest of my life with. You'll regret leaving me, Chris. You'll see that no one will love you like I did. Mike... Please stop. Your words are hurtful and untrue. 
I wish you all the best, but I can't be with you anymore. You're lying. No, I'm not. I'm sorry, Mike, but I have to go now. Please take care of yourself. No, you can't just treat me like that. Why am I the only one who has to live a miserable life with such a disgusting face in the end? I believe someone will love you for who you really are, Mike. You should be optimistic. No, don't talk nonsense anymore. Come back to me right now. As the days passed, I heard that Mike's life spiraled out of control. He became increasingly bitter and resentful towards the world. His once charming personality turned into a spiteful one, and he became isolated from everyone around him. Despite seeking therapy and trying to come to terms with his past, he was unable to shake off the feeling of bitterness and hatred. His life was consumed by his resentment towards me and his own misfortune. Meanwhile, my relationship with David continued to flourish. I finally had a fairy tale wedding like I've always wanted. And now we have two very beautiful babies. We are deeply in love and support each other through thick and thin. We were happily married and building a life together filled with love, joy, and new possibilities. David was always there for me during the hard times, and we shared many happy moments together. We often talk about their future and the family we hope to build, grateful for the chance we had to find each other and start a new chapter in our lives.